Uh, welcome, everyone, to another episode of Cybersecurity Weekly. I'm your host, Fred Cobb, Executive Vice President of Services at InfoSystems. And uh, along with me is Chad Waddell, also with InfoSystems. Chad is our Senior Security Consultant and does a lot of work in our uh, cyber area with a lot of different customers. We have an important topic today. We're going to be talking about the, and this is a tongue twister, so I'm going to say it slow, Center for Internet Security Critical Security Controls. Uh, CIS, uh, CSC controls, it's a, a really good framework for uh, those companies that want to include a, a really uh, concise but important set of controls within their cybersecurity program. And today we're going to be talking about control number one, Chad, hardware mm -hmm. asset inventory. So mm -hmm. in thinking about why companies need to control, protect, account for their hardware assets, just what are some of the things, you know, that companies need to be doing it. First off, really, why do they need why, to yeah. control hardware asset inventory? Yeah, so it's really hard to secure your environment and your assets if you don't know what you have, plain and simple. So it's a really basic concept. Uh, I find that you know a lot of uh, organizations and a lot of um, uh, cyber services type companies and a lot of these conferences, they tend to focus on things like machine learning or AI or all these advanced technologies, but a lot of organizations are really missing out on the basics. So where a good place to start is to identify what hardware assets are in your environment. Uh, because once you have that in place, once you know what you have, then you can take the next steps to properly secure it. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've been engaged on uh, various types of assessments. Mm -hmm. And we go in and we start asking the questions, you know, how many hardware devices you have, how many workstations, how many servers, how many firewall switches. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we get, well, I really don't know. Yeah. And you, just thinking through that, you can think about all the possible problems, not mm -hmm. understanding your hardware um, assets that are out there on the network, talking to each other, uh, talking to the internet, uh, some of the security concerns, right. uh, and not understanding everything that you have. So in thinking through some of those concerns that customers need to be aware of, what, mm -hmm. what comes to mind for you? So, um, you know, going in on a lot of instant responses, uh, it's very common for there to be these devices that aren't really accounted for. So old systems that are out in the corner of a warehouse somewhere or a computer that's just they didn't realize was on and being used and it's just mm -hmm. it's old, it has lots of vulnerabilities in it. So that's one of the big uh, issues there is that even if they have a cybersecurity program they're taking care of all these other assets, you let a few fall through the cracks and that's enough for you to get compromised. Sure. Uh, a lot of companies don't really have the necessary controls on the network that would prohibit mm -hmm. uh, anyone from plugging in a device right. or connecting to the wireless mm -hmm. uh, that may introduce uh, you know, a piece of malware or yeah. some other a type of virus mm -hmm. into the environment due to those lack of controls or, the la again, lack of understanding of what's out there. I can think of situations where uh, a, a person may bring in their personal laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's in, you know, in fact, maybe it's riddled with viruses. Right. And, uh, popping onto the network and because there's no really real-time mechanism to control the, mm -hmm. the uh, bringing in of hardware assets and plugging them in, uh, you can certainly introduce problems. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I guess with hardware assets, uh, thinking about uh, just the, uh, the end of life of the asset itself. Mm -hmm. In other words, you may have gear out there that's running critical um, pieces of, of the business mm -hmm. and it's in end of life, parts aren't available for it you don't even realize it's out there uh, or you don't realize the importance of it. So, you know, ha having the ability to do real-time inventory and mm -hmm. regular and frequent inventory uh, is key. Yeah. Um, and thinking about some of the tools that you might recommend for uh, tracking hardware asset inventory, what right. comes to mind? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll <clears> definitely <throat> touch on that. I think you, you brought up an important point that it's not just about having an inventory it's also about controlling too. So authorized and unauthorized devices. So you don't just want anybody plugging in any device into your network. So so how do you how do you tackle an inventory? I mean, you could go around and touch every device and have an Excel spreadsheet, and we see that a lot where people have an Excel spreadsheet, but mm -hmm. you know it has a timestamp like 2015 on it. Right. So it's probably not too accurate at this exactly. point. So what you want is you want something that's going to actively scan your environment and pull in assets and show what's on inside your environment. So uh, some tools that we uh, recommend a lot and we deploy for organizations is uh, Spiceworks. 
It's a free application. Yeah, it's a good that, tool. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it'll scan your environment, and uh, not only will scan for your hardware, but also software. And we'll touch on that in another episode. Um, but it's going to scan all your devices in. It's going to give you an up-to-date inventory. You have to clean it up a little bit to make it sure it's super accurate. But it's going to constantly be actively scanning your environment. That's key, right? Yeah, there. It, that, that's yeah. a big part because the Excel spreadsheet from 2015, obviously, somebody stopped updating it at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not to mention the business aspects of understanding what you have out there. You know, mm-hmm. the uh, depreciation of assets, yes. you know, it, do you have the right information you're mm-hmm. uh, providing to the accounting department so that things are mm-hmm. coming off the books in a timely manner? Life cycle management. Life cycle yeah. management, yeah. indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah, that's uh, very important. We'll be back with the Cybersecurity Weekly Podcast after we pause for this special message. Security analysts believe cyber attacks will continue to escalate throughout 2020 and are recommending that every company regardless of industry or size, place immediate focus on cybersecurity training and the tools that will protect you from these attacks. Did you know that you can book a cybersecurity assessment right now with Fred Cobb's team of cybersecurity engineers at Infosystems? They will help you discover exactly where you are most vulnerable to a cyber attack and make recommendations on how to strengthen your defense in those areas. This is urgent. It's an issue that affects everyone in our community. Visit the InfoSystems website at www.infosystems.biz to request your cybersecurity assessment. Now back to the podcast. You know, some of the things, you mentioned uh, Spiceworks. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a ceiling limitation in that particular tool. Uh, Can you talk about that real briefly? Yeah, so uh, Spiceworks is really good for organizations that would be like, 500 or less assets is usually how we like to look at it uh, because the database can get kind of large. So there's other solutions like Landsweeper is a really good mm-hmm, solution, that's another but, good one. but it's a pay solution uh, where Spiceworks is free, um, but it's an excellent product and it's going to do the same type of thing. It's going to scan your environment, it's going to pull in your assets, you get deep uh, in, introspection into each of those uh, assets. And once you pull an inventory and you keep it cleaned up and maintained, it gives you lots of insight that you just didn't have prior to having a, an up-to-date inventory. Certainly. Uh, thinking about the uh, some of the other things you can do, like uh, on your switches, as an mm-hmm. example, mm-hmm. Of getting back to the security topic for just a moment around hardware assets, uh, something known as Sticky Mac. You, mm-hmm. know, the, yeah. you don't really hear that term a lot. We used to hear it a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's the idea that a, a device has to be plugged into a specific network yep. port mm-hmm. uh, within the business, uh, um, you know, the, the place of business, right. you know, a particular uh, switch port. Mm-hmm. And if a device comes along that's not authorized due to the MAC address not uh, being in the authorized yeah, list, it's stopped, it's yeah. stopped right yeah. there. It's yeah. not going to be yeah. allowed to connect into the mm-hmm. network. So mm-hmm. that's, that's uh, uh, utilized, but it's not utilized as much as right. I, I used to see it utilized. Uh, and it's one of the things you kind of <clears throat> really to take control of something like that is you get that inventory in place, and then you can properly implement those control, controls in place to prevent other assets from being put in your environment, ensure it's the right assets in the mm-hmm. environment. So it's really, it's it's kind of the, the other side of the coin that you get your asset in place and it's like, okay, well, how do I put controls in place to ensure that there are only authorized devices in my environment? And, that, and Sticky Mac is a great example of a physical switch connected type device right. to ensure that that's the only device that can uh, access your network through that port. Another thing to consider from a security perspective is 8021X. Yep. You know, that's another way to, uh, if a device does uh, get mm-hmm. introduced into the network, if it doesn't meet certain criteria, like mm-hmm. uh, 8021X might limit based on, does it have the latest AV signatures on the device? Is it end of life operating system? Is it an end of life yeah. operating yeah. system? Exactly. So there's different criteria you can mm-hmm. set up within 8021X to say if this device pops up on the network, uh, I'm simply not going to allow it. I'll, right. I'll quarantine it off right. so that uh, I go into this sort of auto protect where yep. it's it's not allowed access into the corporate environment. Yeah, it's it's an excellent tool to put in place. Uh, it tends to be a higher mm-hmm. level of control than most organizations have had in place prior. Mm-hmm. So there can be a bit of a learning curve to it and make sure that it's it's working correctly. But that's really can show an extra level of maturity for an organization that just wasn't there before from a cybersecurity perspective. Certainly. Well, I know we've, we've covered a lot of topics quickly around the CSC mm-hmm. control number one. Mm-hmm. Again, hardware asset inventory. Again, very important. It mm-hmm. is considered a, a, a base control right. within the Center for Internet Security, Critical Security Controls family. Yeah. So certainly mm-hmm. foundational. Yeah. So, um, uh, but we appreciate you stopping yeah, by today and you. talking a little bit yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming up, uh, just following this episode, we're going to continue with the baseline 
CSC Control is going to talk about software asset inventory right. in an upcoming episode. So uh, along the same lines, mm -hmm. uh, just a bit, little bit of a uh, prelude to that, we're going to be talking about security controls around software mm -hmm. asset, why it's important mm -hmm. to understand the software that lives on the systems within right. your environment and just how to secure those. Yep. So awesome. thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate your uh, coming and visiting with us today and stay tuned for more upcoming episodes. Thank yeah. you very much.